Is South Dakota cold? Okay, we already know the answer to that one. Is South Dakota hip? Okay, we already know the answer to that one too. And can you ski in South Dakota? Now we're gonna talk about that and a whole lot more people. So let's hop up on this pony. Hey girl, we're gonna unbox the state of South Dakota. Ah, Mount Rushmore, one of the most recognizable monuments in the United States. There's four presidents carved by dynamite into the side of that mountain. That's George Washington, our founding father, Thomas Jefferson, who helped our country expand and grow, Theodore Roosevelt, the conservationist, and Abraham Lincoln, who got us through the Civil War. Each of their faces is 60 feet high. It took 400 men and 14 years to finish this masterpiece, although a lot of that time was spent standing around, and no one died, which is amazing. Every year, more than 2 million people visit this landmark, which is way more than double this whole state's population. It's a national treasure, Mount Rushmore is, and it's for what this state is most well known for. But South Dakota has a lot of other cool stuff too, and it's pretty misunderstood, or not understood at all, or even thought about. From the outside, you might think South Dakota seems like a strange place. Who are these mysterious people? What do they do? Where do they live? How many are in their species? Are they farmers? Do they have plumbing? If South Dakota's been on your mind lately, or you think you might even move here one day, well then, you should know what you're getting yourself into there, mister, because it's no joke when it comes to outdoors, weather, and politics. Where you live will define your experience here. So we should explore the state from top to bottom and west to east, to see what this vast state is all about. This is South Dakota. Now you could divide South Dakota up into different ways, I suppose, but there's no better way to divide this state up than like this, the west side of the river and the east side of the river. And the river is the Missouri River, which cuts just about right through the middle of this place. These two sides are very different from one another. If you moved here, you'd be able to tell which side somebody is from just by the way they talk. We're going to begin our journey on the western side of the state, or West River, as they call it here. West River is very much the cowboys, ranchers, tough, macho men part of the state. I'm sure the women are macho here too. There's lots of rednecks here, and lots of independent-minded, conservative, don't-touch-my-gun, get-off-my-land chew spitters. They're very wary of outsiders and kind of don't identify with those on the other side of the state, out east. Kind of makes sense folks out this way are the way they are. I mean, this is where the Wild West began, where men duked it out and shot it out over women, gold, and poker. This is also the very rugged and mountainous side of the state, too. West River also gets up much earlier, too. Half of South Dakota is on mountain time and half is on central time. These tough men get up before the rest of the state does, pour a cup of dark coffee out of an old metal pot, and wrangle cattle, sheep, horses, or whatever livestock they have on hand. Ranching is huge in these parts. South Dakota ranks 7th in the nation for a number of heads of cattle, and South Dakota ranchers produce 5% of this nation's cattle overall. There's 5 heads of cattle for every person in this state. It's much drier out in western South Dakota, so many of the farms out this way produce crops like alfalfa, sunflowers, wheat, beans, and taters. For the most part, what isn't farms, mountains, or Native American reservations on this side of the state is going to be teeny towns of a couple hundred people. But that's nowhere you'd likely want to live. Most of the population and everything going on West River is going to be down here in the bottom corner of the state. Rapid City is the biggest place to live in this side of the state. There are 75,000 people here along the foothills of the Black Hills. There's a lot of outdoorsy people who live here who like to get back into them Lar Hills. Mountain bikers, snowshoers, hikers, fishermen, and women, and even skiers make this place home. That's right. There's two places you can ski in South Dakota. The one is 1,000 feet tall and one is 190 feet tall. You can ski on a hill that's 190 feet tall. There's sort of a nightlife here in Rapid City, but odds are you're going to see the same people over and over at the limited number of bars and restaurants in town. That's okay. You're here for the outdoors anyways. Come on now. Rapid City has green belts and parks all over encouraging people to be outside. Jobs-wise, it ain't pretty in Rapid City. A lot of the jobs are centered around ag and tourism, 
and you'd definitely be taking a $25,000 to $50,000 pay cut if you lived here, but it's way cheaper here too. The average home price in Rapid City is about two hundred and fifty k, and rent's like seven hundred bucks. Crime is mostly petty stuff. There's an area on the north end that's got a lot of low-income housing. If you moved here, you probably don't want to live on the north end of town. It's really pretty here. The whole area is sheltered by the Black Hills, so it's warmer and it's not as windy or snowy like it is in the rest of the state. The only other city on this whole side of the state with more than ten thousand people is Spearfish. Here on the far northern end of the mountains. It's a great little place to live, and it's actually a college town, home to Black Hill State University, enrollment 3,600. If you're into the outdoors, church, and are white, you would love it. If you're not, you might not. It's also more expensive here than any other place in the state, where homes are like 330K, but come on now, that's not that much, right? The most expensive place in South Dakota? But talk about some real lack of diversity, leave Spearfish and go up into some small mountain towns up here like Leed or Deadwood. Deadwood is home to 1,200 people and it's known as being the historic Wild West gold mining saloon town where you could get a date, get some booze, get some drugs, and get into a gunfight. In Deadwood these days, they're still gambling and they reenact those old gun battles. You probably wouldn't want to live here, or maybe you would. Belfouche up here only has 5,000 or so folks. There's really nothing going on here, and it's kind of a bad reputation in West River. Then there's Sturgis, which does have a lot going on. Well, at least for 10 days in August. Every summer, like 500,000 motorcycle enthusiasts and other people flock here and take the whole place over. It's a really big deal for the state. But again, you likely wouldn't want to live here. Overall, most of Western South Dakota is just teeny towns and cheap living. South Dakota is one of only seven states without an income tax, and when combined with low property taxes, this state has the seventh lowest tax burden of all states. There's really no place like it, but if you're going to live out west, you're likely going to have to be retired, get a government job, or work from home. But just because there aren't a lot of places to live in West River doesn't mean there aren't a lot of cool things to do here. You may not know it, but South Dakota has the tallest mountains east of the Rockies. These are the Black Hills. Within them is the Black Elk Peak, which towers over this whole region at 7,200 feet. The Black Hills are surrounded by a lot of short grass prairie, and across the prairie is Badlands National Park. Now this whole area is 250,000 acres of rock formations of all sorts of colors. It's like a mini Grand Canyon up here in the High Plains. This is also home to the world's largest cave rock formation, 200 miles of underground passageways of the most intertwined and densest cave system in the world. The Badlands is super cool to explore, but really dangerous too, especially in the summer. There's animals all over here. You know, elk, bighorn sheep, mountain goat, antelope, deer, donkeys, that sort of stuff. And of course, buffalo or bison. There's large herds in western South Dakota that cause traffic jams. But I'm sure you'd rather sit behind this than this. And of course, we have Mount Rushmore here. Everybody in South Dakota has been to Mount Rushmore. Have you ever been to Mount Rushmore? I have. Have you ever visited Mount Rushmore? Yeah. Well, at least two people have. The Mount Rushmore sculpture is at the top of a 57-foot granite bluff. They call it the Shrine of Democracy. Sometimes they have to fill in cracks which form along its face, but it's only going to erode at a rate of an inch every 10,000 years. So, you know, there's plenty of time to see it if you haven't seen it yet. And it's free, as long as you don't have a car to park. Another interesting sculpture here is on the other side of the Black Hills, about 18 miles away. This is the Crazy Horse Memorial, dedicated to preserving the culture of the Native Americans who lived here. Crazy Horse was a Lakota war leader of the Aglala Band of Native Americans, who fought off U.S. expansion in South Dakota and helped win several key battles for his people, including the one at Little Bighorn in 1876. Sitting Bull was another Native American war hero, but he didn't get a statue. However, this monument will probably never be done, people. They started making this in 1948 and they're barely on the face part. But if you're here in 2150, you might be able to see what's supposed to one day be the world's largest stone sculpture. Come on, South Dakota, finish this thing already. Far less impressive in this part of the state is South Dakota's well-known tourist trap, Wall Drug, which is a four block long trinket bazaar thing where you can eat buffalo burgers, donuts, and even ride a real, not real, jackalope. They also entice people to visit by handing out free ice water. Native Americans are a huge part of this state. There's nine total reservations in South Dakota, and most are on the state's western side. South Dakota is 85% white 
and it's also 10% Native American. The Pine Ridge Reservation here is the nation's seventh largest. However, life here is outright poor. In fact, if you measure poverty in terms of income, this is the poorest place in the nation. And 70% of kids never finish high school on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. What's the solution for that? The rest of this side of the state's just wide open. Vast stretches of prairie. I know, the first thing you're probably wondering is, where's the damn Walmart? They have Walmarts here, just like everybody else. And no, they don't drive Conestoga wagons or ride horses to Walmart. They have beat up pickups, just like everybody else in this part of the country. They're trying to get people to move here. I mean, there certainly is a lot of room. One time, a while back, the state ran a sarcastic campaign to try to draw in new residents. It didn't really work. Mars, the air, not breathable. The surface, cold and barren, but thousands are lining up for a chance to go and never come back. South Dakota, progressive, productive, and abundant in oxygen. Why die on Mars when you can live in South Dakota? South Dakota, you can live here. And that's not the first poorly executed campaign the state's done. It also did a don't jerk and drive campaign to tell people to drive safely in snow. And that was made fun of. And the latest one is geared towards solving the state's growing meth problem. I'm on meth. I'm on meth. I'm on it too. So am I. So am I. I'm on meth. I'm on meth. Meth is not someone else's problem. It's everyone in South Dakota's problem. And we need everyone to get on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it too. It's very much a gun-friendly state, South Dakota is. More than half of residents own a gun, but it's likely for hunting more than anything else. Crime here is mostly robberies. I mean, the state only saw 12 murders last year. That's what St. Louis gets in a weekend. Pop quiz, everyone. Do you think in St. Louis you could leave your car running while you duck in to get some bait? Mm. No. In Memphis, can you leave your front door unlocked while you head out to catch a bear? Mm. No. Here, you can. Instead of using guns on people, all that lead is more used on pheasant, elk, and bison than anything else, or coyotes. Coyotes are in season every day of the year here. Poor coyotes. But I mean, there are a bunch of meat eaters on this side of the state. If you're going to find any vegetables on a dinner plate, it's likely going to be on the other side of the river. If out west is all cowboys and conservatives, then the eastern side of the state's far more progressive and city slickers. Well, cities in a sense that all the biggest places to live in the state are on the flat side in East River. Most aren't really very big, though. The east side is much flatter and gets more rain. Much of this side of the state's devoted to farming. I mean, 90% of the whole state's in farmland. A lot of East River is in wheat and corn and soybeans. South Dakota sure knows how to feed themselves, and they feed us too. The tractor culture is strong here, fella. They hold tractor races and they go on tractor runs for charity. Like, they'll do a 60-mile race on a damn tractor? How long does that take? And if you move here, in case you care, you'd find out quickly there's a big rivalry between John Deere versus Case. So John Deere or Case? Ooh, definitely John Deere. John Deere. Why is that? I like green better. <laughs> they don't run just, better. Just otherwise. Many of these small towns on this side of the state have what are called rural route mailing addresses. I mean, in lots of places, your nearest neighbor's miles away. An example is Little Peaver, population 168. And that's a lot for South Dakota. In towns, a liquor store, you gotta have that. A church, you gotta have that. A post office, also a must a hardware store, and a tractor dealer. Home of the Panthers. Looks quiet enough. One place here has two people. It's called Lily. Do they know each other? Both people? Are they married? Maybe they should be. Here's a place called Cottonwood where nine people live. Want to live here? It's about 120 k for a house. Looks really pretty. I'm sure they know each other very well. Just like every other state, South Dakota has four seasons. We don't really have fall or spring. It's pretty much just winter and summer. Okay, maybe not. But as you might expect, it's going to be very windy and snowy in the winter here. Snow piles don't even begin to melt until May. But if you move here, eventually, when it is 40 degrees, you'll maybe even wear shorts once you got used to it. 
Summers can be brutally hot and well over 100 degrees for long stretches. Every state has its quirks, and if you move here, well, you gotta know the lingo. South Dakotans don't say coyotes, they say coyotes. They don't wrestle, they wrestle. And you don't swim in a creek, you swim in a crick. Something isn't pretty near, it's pert near. Like, this job here is pert near done. For some reason, they call Sloppy Joe's barbecue sandwiches or taverns. And you don't eat a tavern for dinner, you eat one for supper. And better have a casserole on hand too, just in case your neighbor stops by for a chat. Over here is the famous Corn Palace, everyone. It's an entire sporting arena made of corn. Every year they cover the place with a different corn design. Sounds lame, but half a million people come to see it every year. But enough of all that. You want to know where you can live in East River, right? Well, you could live at the state capital, Pierre. I know, it looks like you call it Pierre, but you don't. For a state capital, Pierre is boring. There's only 14,000 people here, but it's still the eighth most populated place in this darn tootin' state. Unless you work for the government, it's likely you won't find this place very appealing. In fact, 20 years ago, this was the suicide capital of the nation per capita. And South Dakota's suicide rate is double that of New York's. What is going on? Currently, Pierre is home to Christy Nome, perhaps the hottest governor in our nation's history. <whistles> She's very Republican, and some say she might make a run at the White House one day. She'd certainly get the mail vote. As a whole, the state is Republican, very white, very Christian. If you are not into those things, you're welcome to come here, but you'd be a tiny minority. This is Watertown, population 23,000. Outside of Spearfish, that mountain town we saw earlier, this is the most expensive place you can live in South Dakota. I don't know why. It's just kind of, eh, I hear there's a lot of drug use. Over here's Brookings, most notably home to South Dakota State University. They're pretty good at football. There's 24,000 people here making it the fourth biggest city in this state. For South Dakota standards, this place is fun, and you get a nice home in a safe place with a huge yard for 250 k They got you covered for groceries, bars, and Walmart and Brookings, but it's going to be an hour to get to actual shopping, but that's why we have Amazon Prime, right people? The other big college town here is in Vermilion, population 11,000. This is where the University of South Dakota is. Outside of the Native American reservations, it's the only real liberal place in the state, and jobs are going to be tough here too. I mean, I'd say you could be a teacher, but this state is practically the lowest paid for teachers, so there's that. I mean, if you're going to live on this side of the state, you might as well live in an actual city, right? That brings us to the biggest and most massive place you can live in South Dakota, Sioux Falls. 30% of this whole state lives here in Sioux land, way out by the Iowa and Minnesota borders. Sioux Falls is the place for good jobs in this state, and by good jobs, I mean jobs, like Something besides cleaning up horse poop or serving Dairy Queen. South Dakota and Wyoming are the only two states that don't have corporate income tax. So a lot of banks and corporations have set up shop here in Sioux Falls. One time, Forbes even called Sioux Falls the best place for business and careers. That study took into account growth, quality of life, and education of the workforce. The unemployment rate here is super low. And this metro area has transformed itself from an agriculture-based economy to one centered around healthcare and finance. There's even technology here. Like, for a while, Sioux Falls folks made these balloons that Google used to bring internet to rural areas. Sure, there's not big skyscrapers and there's not traffic everywhere, but it's still a lively urban center where there's a lot to do and there's places to shop at and eat. And they have these new craft cocktail bars and a sculpture walk and even a waterfall park right in the middle of downtown. And they have two 10,000 seat arenas downtown. Some say Sioux Falls is the best small city in America that you haven't been to. In terms of where to live here, the south part of town is the best. The west side of town is worst in terms of crime and rundown areas. But come on, crime and rundown for Sioux Falls is nothing like the bad parts of town where you live. You can get a home here for like 250 k That seems to be the average price for a home pretty much everywhere else in this whole state now, doesn't it? So we covered many parts of East River as we did many parts of West River. But we left one thing out. Which side's best? Well, it's a big debate here, and something South Dakotans on both sides say is serious business. Let's run some metrics. Out West, the sun comes up first, and they're early risers. You know, the whole time zone thing. Overalls versus suits. Mountains versus flat. Ranchers versus farmers. Skiing versus not skiing. Mount Rushmore versus the Corn Palace. 
I think it's pretty clear which side's better. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. South Dakota is a state that's very underrated. And this state is certainly worthy of your attention. It's a beautiful state with well-grounded, solid, no-nonsense folks with a solid work ethic and a kindness that you won't find in many other states. They have a live and let live attitude here, but they'll also show up and help you out in a pinch too. It's likely the strong conservative values, the low cost of living, and the low crime that make it such a special place. And there's stuff to do here too. You've got all the outdoor stuff out west and the art, music, and culture out east. If you live here, you're going to make friends with people who will post a bunch of pictures of sunsets, sometimes every day. But you'll never get sick of seeing them, because like a snowflake, not one South Dakota sunset is the same. Well, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? We learned a lot about South Dakota, didn't we? We figured out where you should live if you moved here and why this state is worthy of your attention. And along the way, we learned some history of Mount Rushmore, talked to local residents, and solved the West versus East River debate. South Dakota can be a warm and inviting place, or it can be a cold and bleak place. It all depends on you. And while you East River folks lost to the West River folks, at least you can lay your heads down on your cold pills at night knowing that at least you don't live in North Dakota. <laughs>
Have you ever driven a tractor or do you know someone who has? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've driven one a couple times, but I don't live on a farm, so I have friends that do, uh, and I have there a couple times, but not regularly. So John Deere or Case? Ooh, definitely John Deere. John Deere. All right. Do you hate North Dakota or wish them any ill will? No, not really. They're kind of like, I mean, there's like a little bit of a friendly rivalry, but for the most part, we hate Iowa. Uh, <laughs> and North Dakota is kind of like our friend. We joke that it's basically Canada a lot, but that's about it. Why do you guys hate Iowa? It stinks like pigs, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of just like a... Well, from where I'm from in Sioux Falls, the nearest big city, like comparable in size is Sioux City. And so we just have like a little bit of a rivalry with them in like yeah. sports and stuff. So, yeah. Um, have you ever been to Mount Rushmore? I have. Yeah, I have a couple times, mostly when I was a kid. I try and avoid it now because it's just really popular and a little tacky. <laughs> Mount Rushmore's tacky? Yeah. That's like sacrilege. How can you say that about your your state's most famous like icon? I don't know. I just think it's personally a little overrated. I'm glad that it exists because it draws all the people who go out there to that, and then they're not around like the woods and stuff more. But I don't know. The Badlands and just the rest of the Black Hills are better in my opinion. What year was Mount Rushmore built? Uh, 19. 27 to 1942 is when oh. I was All right, that's pretty good. What is the name of the guy who carved it? Uh, Guts and Borglum. Dang! Uh, do you know who's on Mount Rushmore? Yeah, yeah, it's Washington, Lincoln, Jefferson, and Roosevelt. So, like, that's pretty good. Do, do most people know those facts, or are you just, like, Mount Rushmore nerdy guy? Um, I would say everyone knows who's on it for sure. Uh, most people know who made it. And if you would probably ask like the everyday South Dakotan, like when it was founded, they'd probably just say somewhere in the forties, like when it was made. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, is the weather terrible? Is the weather terrible in South Dakota? Uh, it really depends. We don't really have fall or spring. It's pretty much just winter and summer. Uh, I would say for the most part in the summer, it's just hot and a little humid, but we get some pretty big rainstorms, but the worst is in the winter. Also, there's some tornadoes in the summer, but pretty rare compared to like Nebraska or Kansas. Um, and then in the winter, we do get a couple blizzards each year and then, uh, a couple ice storms maybe too. But, do you have any good weather stories about South Dakota? Um, when I was like eight, we, uh, or my like small town got hit by an ice storm, uh, and we had, didn't have power for four days. So, Man. yeah. What did you guys do for warmth? Um, we just had candles and, uh, we had a fire in our backyard for some of the time. Um, did you burn, like, did you have to burn your mattress or did you have to eat like, Trees for a week or whatever uh no we just actually there were a bunch of trees that got taken down by the ice storm too so we just used that wood to burn it yeah, cool. and then, yeah i mean we were mostly fine on food we could still like walk to the grocery store and stuff yeah you look like a normal person like you know i you you blend in like i wouldn't even real really be able to tell you're from south dakota if i just bumped into you on the street right yeah um, can you give me an idea on the, the rivalry between the West River and East River? Ooh, yeah. Um, I would say that's way bigger than our beef with North Dakota. Um, I'm from East River. I have a good friend who grew up West River, but then like moved to Sioux Falls. Uh, and it's all friendly, really. We just give him crap about like no one lives out there and it's just like pretty much just cattle. So... I don't know. Um, so which one's better, East River or West River? Ooh, I like East River for the culture and just like the feel of being there. But 
for vacation, I go out to the Black Hills pretty much as much as I can. So I would say East River just because I'm from there. But if I was from West River, I could definitely make a case for them too. Tell me, tell me a, uh, uh, like a, a joke or something that you guys say about West River besides nobody lives there and it's cattle. Like, do you guys like clown them? Um, it's basically Wyoming. I mean, I don't know. There are a lot of cowboys. It's like modern cowboy country. There isn't much of that left in the country. So, I don't know. Just also like the internet, you know, just do they even have it there? The answer is no some of the time, but. <laughs> so what do they say about you guys? Uh, I mean, we just have corn and cattle pretty much. It's flat. It's pretty easy to make fun of just flat corn and cattle, you know? Yeah. Well, they have cattle and you have cattle, but they. They, they have only have cattle and we like are mostly corn and soybeans, but there's some cattle sprinkled in there. Right. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Give me that. Where are you right now? I can tell you're on a windy plain, like a grass swept uh, prairie. Yeah, I'm actually in uh, Estes Park, Colorado right now. Oh, you're not in uh, South Dakota? No, I'm on vacation <laughs> right now. <laughs> no, that's funny because because like I, I can't tell what's going on, but I'm getting like the wind swept high plains prairie vibe, like yeah. with the wind. And, and I'm like, oh, and I, I thought you were going to pan to like a be beautiful butte with like cattle and like, you know, windmills in the background and instead yeah. it's like a hotel in Colorado. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, giving me an insight. I mean, you know, I, I feel like South Dakota is like either a misunderstood state or not even thought about at all. Right. Yeah. Like, I would, I would agree with you there. Yeah. But it's actually, you know, a really good place. Right. Tell like, can you, can you give people an idea on, what they would expect to move to see if they move there, what they would expect to experience? Um, yeah, I would say like the two places that I would like encourage people to move to from out of state are Rapid City and Sioux Falls. Um, Rapid City is like really outdoorsy, like more of a mountain feel. And it's like right at the foot of the Black Hills. Um, there's a lot of native people out there. Um, so it's got a, like a little bit of a different feel than the rest of the state. But and then Sioux Falls is like just, you know, it's a pretty safe city, uh, really good to like raise a family. There are a lot of like banking companies that are moving out there with a bunch of job growth and the whole city's doubled in size since the 90s. So, yeah. How has South Dakota changed? since you remember or what do people say about South Dakota is like this now it's like this or it's changing. Is there anything uh, to that at all? Uh, I would say for the most part, the it's like, it was just a bunch of small prairie towns, you know, and like a couple like medium sized cities, but like now for the most part, I mean, the rest of the state has more or less stayed the same but sioux falls especially has grown a lot and it's like coming more into its own as like an actual city and not just like the place where all the south dakotans live you know yeah yeah I'm, i mean it sounds like the only downfall to living in sioux falls would just be the cold winters right i mean is there any other bad um, thing about living in sioux falls i i don't know i would say I mean, compared to the rest of the country, it's still pretty conservative. Um, so, you know, if that's something that you're not really down with, there's that. Um, I'm down with that. Yeah. Uh, I don't really mind it. I mean, because I've grown up around it, but I do disagree with them quite a bit. But, I mean, it's just part of living out here. Um, I don't know. I would say like traveling to concerts and stuff is a little bit more of a chore or like going to, you know, have more of the big city am amenities. You got to go to at least Omaha, but even then they don't have everything. So the twin cities is like where we go for, you know, Ikea or like our big shopping trips or concerts or stuff like that. Okay. So if you want to watch uh, the killers or shop at Ikea, you have to go to Minneapolis. Yeah. So what about the politics? Do you not agree with you kind of you hinted at that? Are you, are you liberal leaning um, and it's more of a conservative vibe there? I would say I'm more left leaning for South Dakota, but like still pretty middle of the road for the rest of the country. 
just like, I don't know. It seems like our government's a little backwards sometimes. The South Dakota government? Yeah. Like, give me, give me an idea of what you mean. Uh, like the people in the 2020 election, uh, we had recreational marijuana put on the ballot for, uh, it was an initiated measure. So it was like put on the ballot by the people because they wanted it. Um, and then they voted for it and it passed, but our governor, uh, struck it down and like brought lawsuits against it basically to like stop us from getting what we wanted. Christy Nome did that. Yeah. Man, I thought she was so cool too. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people think that, but I don't know, like personally, just from living in South Dakota, like she doesn't really, it seems like she's more focused on like, you know, building up to run for president or something instead of worrying about the, like the safety and needs of her own people a little bit. Yeah. That's not cool. I, I had put her on such a pedestal already and thought she was hot stuff literally. And now, <laughs> yeah, she's, you know, look, looks, looks to be like a regular old politician. All right. Well, I have some questions for you that I, I came up with. Uh, yeah. First of all, what part of South Dakota do you live in? Uh, I lived uh, in Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls. Okay. Uh, what what do your people eat? What, what do we eat? Yeah. Uh, a lot of it is people will just buy a whole cow or half a cow, and then then they're set on like meat for the rest of like the year or whatever. But okay. yeah, or corn. It's we try to pretty much eat local. Yeah, but besides uh, herding cattle or picking corn, what do your people do for fun? <clears throat> well, I guess there's a big difference between East River and West River. Uh, West River, you can go like uh, like Black Hills area, Deadlands, all that. That's that's the best part of the state, honestly. Uh, East River, it's a lot of gambling and a lot of uh, a lot of drinking and stuff. Yeah. Have you ever driven a tractor, or do you know anybody that has? Yeah, I drive. I, I, I've driven a tractor. Okay. Uh, John Deere or Case? Oh, uh, John Deere. Why is that? I like green better. <laughs> they don't run just, better just otherwise. Do you hate North Dakota or wish them any ill will? You know, I don't wish them ill will. I just don't want them to do better than South Dakota. Have you ever visited but, Mount Rushmore? Yeah. 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 What year was what year was Mount Rushmore built? I want to say it was probably built didn't uh wasn't that built in like the early 30s or something yeah that's pretty close I'm guessing it was, uh, yeah i was like early, like 20s or 30s around there 1920s yeah. 30s do you know who built it <sighs> my history teacher is gonna kill me when she sees this uh I re it was some guy that loved dynamite. I remember that he he just kind of lived up there and just blew stuff up out there. I, like I don't remember his name, huh? Yeah, it sounds like a lot of people up there. Yeah, do you know who, do you know who's on Mount Rushmore? You could you could tell me that, right? Uh, George Washington, uh, Abraham Lincoln. Is it, uh, <laughs> Dang. uh, Franklin D. That's Roosevelt? I can't remember who else is on there. Dang. I know. That's, that's it's like six hours away from me. I never, I, I don't get to go there much. Oh, is the weather terrible in South Dakota? No. In the winters, it's severe. It's like negative with a wind chill, it gets to negative 30 in the winter with the wind chill. But in the summer, it gets 90, 100 degrees. 
Yeah. Can you tell me a good winter story about a uh, a weather story up there in South Dakota? A good weather story. Uh, I guess uh, there was once. It was like a Friday. This was just a few years ago. It was. Um, it snowed probably about two feet. It was just wicked winds and everything. Uh, and work let me go early because there's no travel advisory. And I guess uh, I was just helping people shovel their driveways and stuff. And I found uh, two people overdosing on heroin. And I gave them CPR and uh, helped resuscitate them or kept them alive until the ambulance came and gave them Narcan. This was in what? So it started out like a weather story, but now this is different. Where was this at? This was in Sioux Falls. So, so people, is drugs a big deal? Or is it just like a random, I mean, is it common to find people strung out in Sioux Falls? It, it's more of a, there's more people um, like, meth or booze uh once in a while you'll find people on heroin and they just passed out but so they were passed out in a snowbank and you found them oh you know, like uh I, I started knocking on the door and uh because i was done shoveling their driveway and i went in and uh their face faces were blue and the, yeah, I just gave him CPR till the ambulance came. Damn, like and mouth mouth or just like no chest CPR? It's just chest compressions. Oh, okay. I, I worked at the hospital for about five years, so uh, they got lucky that I knew how to do that stuff. Yeah, man. And then the fire department showed up with Narcan and pricked them, and then they were they like woke up. Is that how it works? Uh, they. I've probably saved about probably about six people. What? But, uh, they they hit them with Narcan. Sometimes they don't wake up right away. And how it was configured, they carried them out in a bag. And I thought they were, they were dead, but uh, I guess they survived. But they, they carried them away in the ambulance. Good thing I shoveled because the ambulance wouldn't have been able to get up that driveway. Yeah. So you shoveled a, a pathway for the fire department and went in, gave CPR, called them, and then allowed them to get in and out of there. Dang, dude. That's like, uh, were you supposed to show up and like do their driveway for them? Is that Was that I, the deal? I, I, I do a lot of side jobs like that. Just yeah. Just to help yeah. people out. Yeah. Yeah. So how old were they? About 20. And did they ever like thank you? Did you ever see him again? Uh, uh, yeah, they thanked me. Uh, I, I saw him a few weeks later, but well, I guess one of them thanked me. The other one, he didn't really. I mean, that's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> I, I guess so. Yeah. Hey, man. Thanks for uh. Thanks for saving my life, buddy. But. Yeah, I, I usually don't do uh, that much heroin, but that day <laughs> I did. I always end up having to do that stuff. I had to give, uh, one time my dad was having a heart attack, I had to give him a ride to the hospital uh, when he was, at, yeah. And, and we caught a train on the way there. So after that, that kind of tormented me. So I, I kind of started driving where I knew trains weren't going to be. Because that was just always triggers bad memories, yeah. just waiting in line for the train. So going back to one of these other four, what, what's it, what's one example of the other four? Like similar thing, you went to a buddy's house and he was overdosed, or like how? Did yeah, I was like hey, 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 like because yeah, they they know I'm good with like healthcare stuff technically. Because I worked at the hospital for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, 
Yeah, it just uh, you find someone and they're passed out, their face is blue, they're not getting any air. You just uh, give them CPR until they get air. But if you got Narcan, that would save a lot of trouble. But I never, I think here you have to have a prescription for it. It's South Dakota is kind of corrupt with that kind of stuff. They don't just hand it out all willy nilly. Hmm. Like they're corrupt with Narcan. Well, like they they passed the legalized weed here last election, and it was like sixty percent of the people wanted it. And Christy Nome, the governor, was like, "No, no, no. We're all about personal responsibility, but we're not about giving people yeah. the option to smoke a little little weed." But it's hot in my, it's hot in my studio right now. I'll tell you that. So where, uh, where, where are you at? I, I'm in North Carolina. Oh, okay. Uh, well, actually, no, I'm in South Dakota. No, uh, for <laughs> real though. Um, what do you, what do you, so what do you, what do you South Dakotans think of the rest of the country? I mean, you're up there all isolated where it's all peaceful and quiet somewhat sounds like not all the way, but you know, meanwhile in big cities and the rest of America, you know, that we have some really bad days at times. What do you guys think of the rest of us being all up there, all isolated? Well, we, we don't think about much. We're driving down the interstate 80 miles an hour. Like, soon we'll be able to smoke legalized weed. And it just, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's its own world up here. I'll, I'll give you that. But we're, there's like Omaha is a few hours away. And then uh, Minneapolis and St. Paul was pretty close too. So yeah, yeah. So you live in Sioux Falls. So I got to ask you, East River or West River? Which one's better and why? West River, because there's more to do out there. I know my East River people are gonna be mad at me, but I gotta be honest. My heart's West River. Yeah. There's, Did you grow up I, out there? Or? There's a, a yeah. It's this Deadwood. You can go out to the because you can gamble out there, and then uh, because it's Sioux Falls, you got to go all the way to Iowa to gamble, unless it's one of those like cheap machines. Like if Isn't you want to play, like, only like five minutes away though. Uh, it's the one out of Sioux Falls is about. 20 30 minutes away but it's I, I don't like driving that route because so many people are drinking and driving so you'll drive all the way to deadwood to gamble no no drive I'll, I'll drive out to iowa I prefer to do that but <laughs> okay. if, if i have the option to be west river or east river i choose west yeah. river yeah it sounds like a much better place to me yeah yeah there's a lot of uh the homeless isn't that bad in South Dakota, but yeah. they're kind of they're a lot cleaner here than I've seen in like Minneapolis or Omaha. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you're lucky that you get to live in a clean, relatively safe place, man. Wide open, cheap. Good, man. Thank you for uh, joining me and to talk about South Dakota. You look like a regular person. You don't look like you're from South Dakota. <laughs> I really do not. South Dakota people look like everybody else, I guess, huh? I guess they do, don't they? <laughs> I didn't know what I was expecting here. Where, where, What part of South Dakota are you in? Uh, I'm from the Black Hills. I'm in Whitewood, South Dakota right now. Oh, so you're on the West River side there, huh? Yep. Uh, born right, and raised. Well, give me, tell me, which, which side's better, West River or East River? As someone who was born and raised, I got to say West River. But yeah, I think if you ask uh, someone from East River, they're going to say East River. No. Everybody I talked to said your side's better. Really? Yeah. I'm actually kind of surprised live, to hear that. And they're all on the east side of Missouri, too. Uh, now that I think about it, I can see that. Yeah. Your side's better. West, West River all the way. <laughs> yeah. So give me an idea on – so what's it like out there in, on the west side of uh, – one of the finest states in America. It's pretty small town stuff, lots of outdoors activities, 
lots of tough mountain macho men oh absolutely um well lots of there are plenty of things to do hunting fishing me and my dad were actually going to go fishing tonight but it actually got too cold unfortunately um it's wow. just it's actually like 30 degrees outside right now with the oh man it's like may 30th or something oh yeah I mean, it gets crazy the weather here is ridiculous it can either be got the fluctuations here were pretty ridiculous it can go from you know up to like you know 90 in the summer up to, down to like you know this some like this winter down in like in january when they had that cold front it reached negative 20 negative 30 at one point like it can be okay. ridiculous so uh give me an idea on what do you what do you do for fun besides outdoor stuff if i lived in west river and i'm not into outdoor fishing hunting hiking what am i going to do for fun Oh, if you want to have some fun, there are plenty of things you can do. Uh, personally, one of my favorite things to do is, uh, I mean, there's plenty of things you can do. One of my favorite things to do is, uh, I mean, most of the things you can do around here are outdoor personally, but uh, for fun, there's uh, escape rooms are one of my favorite things to do personally, obviously, but I think those are available just about anywhere. But okay. Um, there are plenty of places to visit. You know, I'm in the Black Hills. You can go visit Mount Rushmore, obviously. Um, there's museums. Um, there's lots of places you can go if you don't, or if you want to stay inside. Um, there's honestly, since this is such an outdoorsy state, there isn't a lot you can do inside. It's this state is more for people that are more based in out, like more for people that want to be outdoors. Yeah. And, so why do you live there then? um because i was born here yeah you ever think about leaving or are you gonna stick around there jordan um i think i'm gonna stick around yeah i like it here i do you know you could go out and um try to escape out of the badlands wouldn't that be fun mm, true you definitely could maybe so give me an idea on what south dakotans think of the rest of america Ooh, I think a lot of South Dakotans think that the rest of the country is ignorant. Or that, okay. that they don't uh, know a lot about the interior part of the country from experience. Um, my mom's uh, boyfriend spent 20 years in the Navy in Norfolk, Virginia, and he had to constantly explain to people where South Dakota even is. Um, every person I've known here has had to, has received questions from people asking do we still ride horses to school? Um, the answer to that is no. We do. There are people here that ride horses. There are ranches. I mean, even outside of the biggest cities in the state, you know, uh, even right out, you can literally drive 10 minutes outside of Rapid City, the second biggest city in the state, and you're going to run into cattle grazing. Like, mm -hmm. but yeah. But I mean, not not what we think of you. What does what do you think of? The rest of the country in terms of the politics the stuff going on with you know there's a lot of crime there's a lot of homeless everywhere there's a lot of you know america's not doing very well right now um but you guys are way 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 away so what do you think of us um i think a lot of people in south dakota don't really think about it i think we like to think about um our problems here um which honestly we don't have a ton of the problems in south dakota mainly mainly resolve uh, revolve around uh problems on the reservation with uh poverty and stuff like that um which i'm i'm gonna admit i don't know a lot about but that's what i would uh, that's what i know a lot of the problems revolve uh, revolve around do you ever go to the reservations um not personally but i know my dad is a member of uh, one of the reservations hey dad which member of the reservation which reservation are you a member of Stanley. yeah yeah, uh, my dad is a member of uh, Standing Rock uh, Reservation. Oh, okay. What did he think about the pipeline? Uh, did he go up to the when they had the protests and they lived there for like four or five months? Oh yeah, my dad actually is in support of the pipeline. A lot of people here are in support of the Keystone Pipeline because it uh, creates jobs in the area. Okay, but he's he's a member of Standing Rock, but he's for the pipeline. Yeah, I, he is. Okay, because. Most most of the Standing Rock people. I know. Like, yeah, I know yeah. most of them were not, but my dad is. Good. Well, I am too. 
All right. That's interesting. Your dad and I would get along just swell. I think so too. <laughs> yeah. So have you ever shot a gun, Jordan? Oh, every summer. Absolutely. Not. Oh, okay. All my right. dad owns tons of guns. There are, uh, my dad has, dad, how many guns do you own? A lot. Should I, should I interview your dad? <laughs> no, my, no, you don't. I know. Uh, we don't talk about how many guns we own, but we. Yeah, yeah that's, that's probably not smart. So, uh, horses, do you ever ride horses? Um, I've never ridden a horse before, but I know people that have. Do you, have you ever been on a tractor, Jordan? Ooh, I have not. I've always lived in the city, like not really the city, but in a town like you know, I've never really lived on a ranch before. That's probably why I've looked more. That's probably why I look more, you know, like and I, how you would expect someone from South Dakota to look because I've not really, you know, been on a ranch before. I don't really, I never really grew up on a ranch. I look, you know, more modern, I think would be a way to put it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, do you ever go to Mount Rushmore? Yes. Have you been to Mount Rushmore? Oh, absolutely. I literally live 30 minutes from Mount Rushmore. So what year was it built? Ooh, in the 20s, I believe. I don't even yeah, remember. That's kind of close. Do you know who built it? A uh, German guy. I can't remember his name. Yeah. yeah it was built by immigrants. Built it? Uh, it was built with the... Uh, uh, it was built with uh, immigrants with a system of uh, pulleys by... Oh, I can't remember what it was called. Yeah, I, I have a basic idea of what it was. Built. Yeah. I didn't go visit my Rushmore for the first time until I was like 10. So jobs wise, there's not a lot of jobs on your, in your area. What are you going to do for when you, after you finish school and you want to get a professional life going, Jordan? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, for my professional life, I'm not hundred percent sure. I'm thinking I'm probably going to leave the state to go to college, but then I think I'm probably going to come back because I think I will be able to find a profession here in state for what I want to do. What do you want to do? Um, atmospheric science. Okay. Is that studying the like me like air? meteorology, like meteor like oh. meteorology. Basically. Like you want to be in like a weatherman? Kind of. Like I was thinking like a uh, studying weather patterns, like more like a behind the scenes, like a National Weather Service type of stuff. Okay. So what do you think about global warming? Um I think like do I think it exists or do I think it's uh whatever? I think global warming is a like I think global warming is caused by man-made activity. Um, I think global warming is in fact something we need to be significantly worried about um, because of human uh, you know influences, especially with influences such as carbon emissions. And I think we need to look at potentials, not just um, prevention methods, but such as but with we need to look at even having a solution such as carbon sequestration or something like that, where we can take carbon we put out of the air or we can, we can take carbon we put in the air and take it out of the atmosphere. But we need to look at investing in the technology to do that. That's what I think about uh, global warming. We need like, uh, remember in Spaceballs when they had the um, vacuum sucking lady that had the vacuum cleaner that sucked the air out of the atmosphere did you see space walls i have not but i oh, think i know the movie you're talking about yeah you should watch that movie yeah so what would you like to see different in your state i mean you're a young kid you you don't really have a lot of perspective on how the state used to be in the old days but you have a say in how you think the state will be in the future what would you like to see more of in south dakota Ooh, I'd like to see more diversity in South Dakota. I like, I think we need to see, um, yeah, I think we need more diversity, especially in uh, some of our more uh, urban areas, like you know, Rapid City and uh, Sioux Falls, especially. I can't really speak to Sioux Falls, but I, especially Rapid City, I think, like, uh, not not necessarily with uh, Native Americans, but with people of uh, African American descent and, uh, you know, Latino descent, I think we need uh, more people of diversity in our uh, state and i think we need to work on um uh, mixing people of diversity in because it's very 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 white here how do you think you can entice african americans and hispanics to come to your state that is a good question and i have i don't have an idea on how to do that mm. 
Um, there's probably a way you can do that. I don't know how you. Yeah. Are you bored there? Do you like it there? I like it here. Uh, sometimes it can be boring, but I think it's fun here. Well, bor boring is a good thing sometimes. Oh, yeah, because yeah. you don't have to deal with, you know, all the major problems in the other places. Yeah. All right. Well, I got one more question. So John Deere or Case? Ooh, you got to go with John Deere. Come on. Yeah. Uh, who, who drives a Case tractor anyway, right? Exactly. Come on. All righty. Well, hey, man, I appreciate you joining me. Yeah, of course. Thank you. So this is going to be on probably a little part of it will be on the video at some point. So. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right, Jordan. Have a good one, kid. Yeah, you too. Woohoo! Giddy up! <laughs>